when I was like in front of the camera, I loved my job. But behind the camera, my life was so miserable. Because I didn't have, I, it didn't give me that divine happiness. And whenever I came back to the gathering, that's when I felt so happy. Because I, you know what? I never felt such a genuine love from my sisters in Islam. It's just, subhanAllah, it's so, you know, every time I meet my sisters in Islam, I feel the sincerity. I feel the ikhlas that these sisters love me for the sake of Allah, care about me. Okay, they remind me of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They remind me of my purpose in life. And if I compare that to my job, it just reminds me how, no, oh, if you are, if your your show is a top rating show, you're something. If you're making a lot of money, you're something. Right? It's a it's a competition of materialism, and it wasn't given me that the happiness that I yearn for. I only felt it in Islamic gatherings with my sisters in Islam, in learning about Allah, in learning about Islam. So I had to. It was. I have to ponder and think about my life. Is this really what I want? I mean, yes, I, I like doing what I love, but at the end of the day, it's just making me so miserable. I, I have to sacrifice um, what I love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's, it's not helping me as a Muslim. It's only holding me back. And it's not making me happy, okay? It's making me miserable. And it's an unhealthy lifestyle, okay? It's, it, because you can divide the, the body and, and, and spirit into two types, all right? Um, our body, we need food to be able to nourish us, to be able to give us the energy to go through the day, right? And it's the same with our soul, with our heart. We need to fill it with God. We need to fill it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we don't fill this, we will become like walking dead zombies. We will become a lost soul. That's why whenever I, I uh, talk about how what Islam is to me and what the Qur'an is to me. I always say, whenever I have the Qur'an in my hand, it's like my compass, my direction in my life. Whenever I feel lost, whenever I feel unhappy, because I'm human, I, even if I'm Muslim, I go through trials and tribulations, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, it doesn't mean that you are a Muslim, you will not be tested and tried. Of course! We will be tested and tried all through our life in this world. All right? But uh, the, the difference is when you don't have Islam and when you have Islam, is that you have the guide. You have your compass. It's like when you're in the middle of the sea. If you don't have a compass, where will you go? You'll just be lost. But the Quran is your compass, is your direction in your life. And we, and we need Allah. We need Quran and, and by getting closer to Allah we need to continuously read the Quran. So uh, subhanAllah I there was one night I was crying to my thank you sister. I was crying to my um, mom and I was I was telling my father I don't feel like I belong in in my in showbiz anymore. I mean I, I like acting but I just don't feel like it's making me happy because I feel, you know, mind boggled. My mind is like, I don't know what to do. Uh, should I leave? Or, I mean, I'm I'm happy with um, I'm happy in Islamic gatherings, but at the same time, I'm happy in front of the camera, but upset behind the camera. Like, what should I do? And then. My mom and dad were like, uh, it's up to you, it's, it's your choice. You know what's best for you. 
and always choose the path of what happiness, what makes you happy. So I did my salah and I prayed so hard and um, I, I told my father that I wanted to go for Hajj. And um, subhanAllah, it's a very interesting story. I remember it very clearly. Uh, I went to uh, the office where they fix the Hajj papers. And the lady there told us that the application, uh, the registration was already full. Because they have a quota for Hajj. And um, I felt so upset. I was so sad, but subhanAllah, there was like a, the director of the office, the head of the office, and she got my application and she said, don't worry, we'll find a way for you. And subhanAllah, uh, our application was filed. And subhanAllah, after a few days, um, we got, our application was uh, uh, sent, was lodged, and we got a place. Allahu Akbar. And um, so I went to do my medical, I had my injection, and then flew there. And SubhanAllah, uh, it's such a beautiful, divine feeling that I felt when I was just on the bus reciting, Labaik Allahumma Labaik. Like I was, my heart was beating so fast, yes. I'm going to see the Kaaba. I'm going to walk in the same place that the prophets walk. So, um, and SubhanAllah, we were uh, in the prophets, um, we went inside the prophets um, masjid, and I was just in tears. And I was looking around like this, I was looking at my feet, I was just, oh. Prophet Muhammad used to walk here. I can't believe I'm here, subhanAllah. And um, I was so upset because for personal reasons I couldn't go inside the masjid, but the, my companions that were with me, when they came out, they were crying. They were crying. And I was like, so how, how was it? And they were just, they were speechless. They were like, oh no, I... They were just crying and crying and crying. SubhanAllah, we can't explain to you uh, the way we feel. And um, I said, oh, Ya Allah, invite me again so I can enter your know, other Prophet's masjid, inshallah. And then we made our way to uh, Mecca. And then when I saw the Kaaba, oh, SubhanAllah, it was, even me, I couldn't even explain the way I felt. I just cried. It's such an amazing, amazing feeling. And when you look around, the people there, Chinese, African, white, black, everybody of all different races, rich, poor, all of them, all of them, kind, all kinds of people, they're just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you look at the men, they're just wearing two, I'm not sure if it's, is it called ikram? Yeah, they're just wearing ikram. 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 Ikram, sorry. My touch read is, needs a bit of clue. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I, I, it was amazing, amazing. Everybody there, rich, poor, no matter what race, all there to worship the one and only God. And this, the, the religion that, the only religion that I see this with my own eyes. And um, it was just so overwhelmed and so happy. I can't even, it's not even, happy can't even explain the way I felt. SubhanAllah. Inshallah, may Allah invite all of us for Hajj. <laughs> Inshallah. Um, and you know, you don't have to be old to do Hajj. If you have the means, go. Young or old, don't wait. SubhanAllah. 
It's an experience that you will never regret, and subhanAllah, you will never, never, never forget. And when you're there, you don't want to leave anymore. <laughs> you just want to stay. SubhanAllah. So, uh, now I've been a Muslim for six years, SubhanAllah. And uh, Allah gave me a wonderful husband who has been such a blessing in my life because he's not only a husband that he's he always reminds me of Islam, of Allah uh, always encourage me to seek knowledge and always shares his knowledge and that's the most important thing you know you need someone uh, on the same level as you to remind you of Allah and to go through life through this journey because this this world is temporary right it's we're just we're just passing by here our final abode is akhira subhanallah so uh, sometimes you know we may feel sad or depressed we might be going through problems in our lives but we always have to remember that we're not alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there for us. And if we feel helpless and hopeless, and we feel like unworthy because we we have so many sins, we cannot forget how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. If you just make tawbah, and ask for Allah's forgiveness, He will forgive you. In a hadith, Allah says that even if your sins are as big as the foam of the sea, He will forgive you. He will be there. And if you call upon Him, He will come running to you. So, so don't be sad. And, and I'm reminding myself this. And, you know, it's okay. You're gonna be okay. Just remember that if you are a good Muslim and you and you follow the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and you're good to others and you do your duty in Islam to share Islam to the whole of humanity, then why why be sad? I mean, you are a servant of the king of kings. SubhanAllah. There is nothing to be depressed about. SubhanAllah. And um, I want to say, I want to share a hadith about Abu Dhar. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, wealth is not defined by the things that you have, the material, material possessions that you have. Wealth is defined by content, your contentment. And subhanAllah, that contentment is only given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is something divine from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we read the Qur'an, Allah says in the Qur'an, Verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts undressed. SubhanAllah. So it's only Allah that gives us that. Because, you know, Allah said in the Qur'an that, I have only created man and jinn to worship me. So we are created for that purpose. And if we don't do that purpose, then we will we'll never be happy. We'll never be happy. So the only way to happiness is through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through being a good Muslim. SubhanAllah. So inshallah, may this um, be beneficial for all of us and a reminder for myself Inshallah, may Allah make it easy for us to be good Muslims. May Allah make it easy for us to follow the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu May Allah make it easy for us to gain more knowledge about our deen. Inshallah, inshallah. Ameen. So jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Masyarakat Jazakallah Khairan, Sister Queenie Patiya.